maybe a little bit more than a year ago. Um, I was going through some health situation, and it kept me in bed a great part of the day. And I would watch these YouTube videos from this guy named, I believe his name is Josh Beckley. And he does this kind of um, abstract artwork that kind of what I started doing, you know, because I could watch the video, but I couldn't actually do the artwork right that time. So I'd watch the video and then I was like, okay, that's one thing he did, one other thing he did. And so I would just try to copy his steps or at least copy some of the steps that I remember him doing and mm-hmm. kind of build up from there. And then, you know, I had been doing the campaign for the wheelchair accessible vehicle and I've always, you know, the, the intent was always to give something back to, to the donors. And so at that point I was like, well, this is artwork that I can do pretty easily. Um, why not use that as the, and then it's also, it's, it's not specific one way or the other. Anybody can like this kind of artwork. It's not necessarily that it's like, you know, landscapes or, you know, still life or anything like that. So that's why I, I ch- also chose that as a style to go with because it kind of can be open to anybody or their own imp- their own interpretation. Mm-hmm. So, you know, being that I wanted to give something back, that was a style I went with. But more about your art, um, what inspired you? I mean, I know you were saying that you were looking at that guy's YouTube videos, but like when you were watching them, I assume that there was something that was very, that spoke to you. The ability to do it quickly. Um, um, I knew in my situation there wasn't going to be a whole lot of time to spend on, or not that I'm doing it sloppily or that, uh, you know, not taking my time with it. It's not that. It's more or less the artwork, in a sense, allowed me to, do, to, be, to be free with it and also to be, um, in a sense, make like a, uh, what is that line where you, like the conveyor line. So I could do one, one, one thing on one board, the next thing on the next board, and then get more out that way. Um, being that I knew I was behind already, was like maybe a year behind, two years behind. And so I thought that yeah. was, uh, set to five, about, about 15, 15 so far. Okay. Um, I think total will be about 25. So I'm nearing the end. Um, and then I guess at, you know, at that point I'll be caught up. Um, as new people donate or new donations come in. What medium are you using? I'm using acrylic. Oh. I'm using, um, what is the brand? Liquitex. It's just a, a, a brand of paint that I used when I was in school. What challenges have you faced doing this project? A lot of them, the health problems, just learning the style and getting it down to where I was getting the results that I wanted. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Like what results you were looking for? The paint was bleeding. So in his work, he does a lot of tape and then painting. So you've got a straight line. And so I'd get the straight line. I'd tape it down. I'd get it taped down. But the paint was still bleed underneath. Mm-hmm. And it didn't look like that in his, in his videos. And so um, I went on YouTube again and looked up how to get straight lines and I found one artist that his technique worked the best um so basically you gotta prep it beforehand so you you take the tape down you prep it with this thing called matte medium and it gives you the sharp edge because now the paint um won't bleed underneath the tape as much um maybe another thing that I was probably doing at that time was probably using too much water you know, to kind of, you know, blend this, blend the images or blend the, blend the colors. I didn't have the right, I was like right um, tools, but a lot of the stuff, uh, it was just trial and error, you know, just to kind of get that splashy look, that splattered look. You know, it, it does all, because again, it's, it's abstract art, so it's kind of um, not going to be perfect all the time at least you know, the expectation of being perfect. And so you just give it a shot. And if it goes good, then it goes good. That's kind of really, I mean, and then you kind of, I think even at another point, um, doing the backgrounds, like the first layer of paint 
on some of the boards was making it warm. And so I felt that maybe it was using too much water again or blending material to kind of have the colors blend. So I just kind of had the trial and error. I think that's why I was glad I started with cardboard first, just to kind of get some of these um, initial things dialed in uh, with the color, you know, with the tape, you know, just kind of, you know, being me able to be able to handle the paintbrush and get the strokes that I wanted. Uh, that was another, that was another issue. Are you just doing mm-hmm. your own boards or is that something that you, you get done? Yeah. I just, um, yeah. One of the boards that I got, um, I thought they were, I, I thought they were cane gessoed. And so at least I know at least two of the pieces of artwork that I did, uh, it didn't have any gesso on it. There's at least not as enough as that I would want or expect on there. Mm-hmm. So in the second batch, I, you know, painted, had them painted again, um, just to make sure that they're getting some of it. Cause that was the, the issue with the water, the water, it would just soak up the water so much. And then the threads in the canvas, you could, would just bubble up. And so it made for an effect, but that's not the effect that I was trying to make. It was, that was totally by accident. Some of my listeners may not know so much about how the effect of not having enough gesso and what it does. Can you talk to me a little bit about the color brilliance? Because that's one of the things that your art really stands out to me on is that it has such bright, brilliant colors. So one of the things I also do is uh, there's this, um, either it's called Flow Aid. Yeah, I think this is called the Flow Aid. So Liquitex has this um, liquid called Flow Aid that you can put little drops because at first I was putting a lot and then it would just kind of just be too much, but um, little drops with the paint and that will help it blend. And so that way you can get the, the swashes of color that, you know, change, you know, like, a, like, like in the sky or like in the rainbow. So like the colors would change and blend nicely. So what you're referring to is like a gradient, like getting your gradients. Yeah. Like a gradient. Yes. Or like if you want to see, one color change to another color, that's the gradient, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or if you wanted to see it blend a little more, so like, you know, green and another color make it develop into another color, that, you know, like the like the color wheel. Um, but yeah, with, with the water, I kind of had to use a little less, learn to use less, I think on my base coat, or at least the, the background color, to kind of spread it out, I would use the water. But once I got more to um, trying to have uh, a thick pattern of color, less water, maybe even less of the flow aid. Um, and then, yeah, using just good paint, you know, that's kind of another thing that I've noticed. I mean, I'm using liquid text, but I've seen some of the the lesser or basic uh, sets of liquid text is not as vibrant. So, like, when I have, like, the professional brand, um, it comes out really nice. But then when you look at the basic... You know, paint, not that it's trash, but it's 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 a little different. It doesn't come out as good. Can you talk about a personal triumph that you've had? I took newspaper. So I had the back color. So I just kind of basically just filled the canvas with color. I liked how it was blending. One of the tech things that he did is that he sprayed it with extra water to kind of make it look even more... Mm. Um, faded out. I don't know. You know, muted. The color's a little more muted. And I tried that with my canvases, and these are the canvases that didn't get the best uh, amount of gesso. And so they started, the canvas started to bubble up. And so I put newspaper on it, thinking that the newspaper would um, take up the water, you know, at least absorb some of the water, leave the color. And so at a certain point, as I was seen how it was drying I didn't like it but I peeled it back and in some portions the paint was there and the color was still there but in other portions the newspaper had peeled it all the way all the way off so it went back to the color of the canvas and I just dealt with it you know it was one of the situations where it's like well I don't want to go back and have to paint it all over you know just keep moving forward and see where it will take me um some people when they were saw the process, they were like, "Ooh, I like that." And then 
I didn't, still didn't like it, but um, once we just continued from there, um, it looked a little busy. It still, they did look a little busy, but the end product for me, I felt like, oh, wow. I mean, I really appreciated the fact that I continued rather than you know, trying to perfect it. Again, I try to really keep in mind that this is abstract art and that it's going to come out the way it comes out, you know. Um, you know, you don't want to overdo it, but I I felt that on those two, I had overdone it. But by the end, no, it, it just looked I looked like I had taken it to another level compared to the other ones that um, I was still doing just, I wouldn't say beginner level, but um, for me, I guess you can call it beginner level because I've never painted like this style before. How has your art been received by the community? Have you been showing, or do you go to shows, or is that something you want to do, or anything like that? Um, yeah, you know, I've got a few good feedback. You know, some people have posted the picture with their artwork. Some people have just, you know, sent me a text and said that they got it. So um, that has been good. I'm looking at a 60-day a span of trying to get out new work. Mm -hmm. I post on my social media. And I think through that, I got an opportunity to show at a local coffee shop, um, bakery here in town. You know, as a friend, um, he works at a place, you know, that people do um, have had our work up in there for a matter of months. And he just kind of just sent me a message and said, if I was open to it, we could talk about setting up a, a show. Or I would say show, but a showing of some of the artwork. So I think through that, that was definitely a, a great opportunity. I mean, I've been thinking about doing or getting something like that for a while, um, and especially with this artwork being that I can even do it on bigger canvases would be would be fun. I mean, I think it'd be totally fun. Shout out to everybody. Uh, what is the name of the charity and what does it represent? So the charity's name is Help Hope Live. Um, they, they help people. I guess the main focus is to help people who are in need of, you know, either surgery or equipment or um, devices or maybe a rebuilding of a current living space that the funds right now for them are not there. So they help create campaigns for these people to help them get an opportunity to reach donors, to reach their goal and achieve whatever it may be. In my case, it is a wheelchair accessible vehicle. Um, you know, so get out and go and do things. I mean, right now, um, the way I get out and go and do stuff is uh, public transit. You know, there's a, I mean, I'm greatly blessed to have the this, this system here in the town. It's called the B-Line. So I can call and schedule for, you know, whatever it may be. Go grocery shopping, go to a friend's house, go to a movie. Um, but as the word gets out, there are more people using it now. And so it's become a lot more, less availability to go and do things. So they, and then, you know, they have a, a small staff. It's kind of a number of things that kind of make it more viable for me to go and do things if I had my own vehicle. Let's just say that. Definitely. Uh, simply put. <laughs> And uh, through Help Hope Live, um, yeah, they, they give me the opportunity to promote the campaign. I mean, I get, they'll help me in any way I need help with, but I'm going in this direction, and they've, you know, supported me in that way. They do uh, uh, for a lot of different things, you know. So, you know, maybe someone needs a, a, a surgery. So, you know, they can help them in that case. Um, maybe it's a, a device for the home. Um, they can help them in that case. 